title of the sermon, The Futility of Life Without God. Many people are trying to live without God today. They say, I don't believe in God. I have a religion. I am happy. I have money. And many people today are searching for meaning in life. For that reason, we go to the university, we travel, we seek a religion. We are traveling to the Tibet because trying to find yourself a purpose for your life. But in all the wrong places, people are seeking the meaning of life in all wrong places. Even Christians. Even Christians. They're thinking, what's the meaning for my life? Say, no, in church, it's not in the church. For that reason, they left the church. Serving the Lord? No, serving the Lord. No, I think it's not my, it's not my life. So, people are seeking meaning in money. Our society is focusing money. Money, money, and money. I want to have million dollars. I, I want to have the best business. I want to be famous. People are trying to search many houses. I want a new house, new apartment. Careers, it's happening around the world. I have to be PhD. When, when they are PhD, what's happening with their lives? They lost family, they lost their lives. They're addicts and the drugs, I don't know. I have a sad statistics about that. People are focused on the politics. They say, being a politic, I'm going to be someone in this world. My life is going to be different. So, trying to find eternal meaning in a temporal world is like trying to fit a square peg into a room hole. It's the reality today. For that reason, we are seeing more and more people depressed. More and more people taking medicines for their emotions. So, God made us for eternity. Don't forget it. For eternity. And only his eternal presence in our lives can satisfy our thirsty for meaning because we were created for eternity. So, we start in the verse 1 to 3. We are going to see the intro about who is the author and who is reading the, this book. And the author is, say, the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Just in the first verse, you are seeing someone is very rich. He's a king. Just think of being a king. But who's him? Son of David and Bathsheba. You know about them? Bathsheba. He was the most successful man on earth and wisest man in the Old Testament, Solomon. Wow, rich, famous. Wise, son of a king. He has the great nation. He's very smart, intelligent. He wrote Psalms, Proverbs. Oh, this book was wrote for someone. You were trying to take a picture with him. He is, he was like Bill Gates, rich. Yeah, he had all he wants. Power, money, women. He was famous like Brad Pitt. All people knew him. Just think about the other nations. Even the king of Saba came to him just to listen. Him. He was very famous. He's the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. But he did silly things too. He married with women who were not of his fate. And they destroy his life. Be careful if you are dating people who are not Christians. Maybe they are going to destroy your life. Because Solomon lost everything that the Lord gave to him because the women. Because he didn't obey the Lord. And he's saying in his last days maybe, I am going to write a book about life about meaning of life. Because he's thinking, what I did with my life. Verse 2. The subject of the preaching. What's the subject of the preaching? What vanity of vanities, say the preacher. 
Vanity, vanity is all is vanity. Just think about that. You say, all my life is nothing. You have power. You are famous. You are intelligent. You are a king. Just think how Israel is now. And you are saying, everything is vanity? The word vanity is used 38 times in Ecclesiastes. The word vanity means empty. He's thinking, I am empty. I don't have anything in me. Many people are living in that way today because they are empty. They are trying to fill in, his li in their lives with drugs, alcohol, relationships, money, traveling because they are empty. He's saying, I am empty, my friends. But Solomon, please, you have the new car. You have thousand women with you and you are empty. He said, yes, I am empty. All that is in this world, all that is under the sun is empty and unable to satisfy you and me. Because it's under the sun, not over the sun. Just think about that. Things of this world promise, promise satisfaction, but they deliver only frustration. Satisfaction, movies, traveling, food, Careers, politics, relationships, sex, satisfaction. What's this generation seeking? Satisfaction. What's happening after the satisfaction? They need more because they are feeling empty and empty and empty. For that reason, people, is new job. I am not happy he's here in this job. New wife, no, I am bored of my wife. New church, I am bored in this church. I'm thinking. Why they are leaving the churches, the Christians? They are empty. They are empty. So, fame, new city, new nations. If we do not learn this through in the easy way, through information, then we must learn it in the hard way through the experience like Solomon. He learned that he's empty through his experience. He had everything. And at the end, he's saying, I don't have anything. Why? Because he understood that his heart was empty. Maybe his palace was full of richness, money, fame, power. And he, when he was in his bed, he's thinking, I am empty. I don't have anything to offer someone. So, next, verse 3. What's the meaning of life? So, he's saying, verse 3. What does man gain by all the toil and which the toils under the sun? The Hebrew word gain is profit. Means profit, gain, increase, or surplus. What's people seeking today? Profit, no? Success. Solomon is describing life as if there is not God at all in the picture. He's saying, without God, People is just seeking this kind of things. But you are not going to find you are seeking because you are not going to find in these things that you are needing now. So the question is, what is the profit of your job without God? What is the profit of your job without God? What's the profit of your life, your studies, your service to the Lord without God? Matthew chapter 16, verse 26, it says, For what will, if profit a man, if he gains the world, the whole world, not just part of the world, the whole world, and forfeits his soul. Many people is focused today to do what? To gain the whole world. I want to get it. I want to get house, careers, everything. What about your soul? And Solomon is saying, hey, I am empty. His soul was asking to him to feed. And he didn't find under the sun anything. Because it's not there. It's in heaven. So, or what shall a man give in return for his soul? The statistics say that the Americans are the most hard-working people. 
since 18 to 55 years, they're always doing what? Working and working and working. They wake up 5 in the morning, they go to the job, they spend 8 hours in the office, they back home, and I say, what's the profit of your job without God? It's a routine. Say, I have money. <laughs> but you see the money. Now you don't know how to use it. Just think 40 years, 50 years working every day. Without God is nothing, my friends. Without God is nothing. Solomon is saying, nothing. If profit a man, if he gains the whole world and lost his soul. How is your soul? Verse 4 to 11, the futility of life. He's going to do some illustrations about that. And he's going to about the course of life. What's the course of life? He said, a generation goes and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. The same day the baby is born, an elderly person dies. It's the process. Someone is born and someone is dying. I don't have the numbers here, but in Spanish, I think I was doing Spanish. And maybe it's, I don't remember well. But in this thousand people is dying. No, 100,000 people is dying every day. And 200,000 are burning every day. Just think about this process. Maybe tomorrow is my turn to go back to leave this scenario of the world. It's a process. The same day. So, man is just passenger, but the earth is the same. We are going to be here maybe 70 years, 80 years, no more. Generations and generations pass from another generation. We are a generation that we are living, some of us. Who is going to come? A new generation. And Solomon is saying, yes, it's a process, it's a routine. The earth is the same. This goes and goes in endless cycles. The stage remains the same and play remains. We are just actors, but we are always changing the actors. Even churches, pastors die, Christians die. New generations came. I was with a friend, I think three weeks ago we were driving, and I asked, just think about that. If we die today, the world is going to continue. People is going to continue living, going to their jobs, living with their families. So Solomon is thinking, wow. You're thinking, he was a king. He had everything, and he's thinking, I'm just a passenger in this world. Even Paul said that our citizenship is in heaven. It's not here. But we're so focused here that we're thinking that we're going to do something here. So generations came and generations go. And the present generation of unsafe men with all of its selfish labor is not closer to the goal of satisfaction and rest than was the generation of Cain's day. Is the truth of men, my friends. Do you have rest? Do you have the peace, the joy? Solomon didn't. So, next, the routine of the sun is another illustration. It says, the sun rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it rises. Solomon says, the cycle of meaninglessness is illustrated by the sun. Just think of the sun, the days. Goes and goes. Rise, set, rise, set, rise, set. Every day the same thing. It's the reality of many people today. They wake up in the morning. It's the, like a conductic Psychology in the United States, they teach these kind of things. Wake up in the morning, go to the bathroom, cut your, your, your teeth, change clothes, breakfast, again to the bathroom. Next, 
Go to your car, drive to your job, spend there out eight hours, back home. It's our lives. It's our lives. Our thinking. It's not good. Solomon is saying it's a routine. It's like the sun. Even the even in the natural. The question is, how is your life? When we serve the Lord, we break the routines. New experience. New places, new people. Doing for the kingdom of God something amazing. Not just thinking to do about something about it. Another example, the routine of the wind. It says, the wind blows to the south and goes around the north. Around and around goes the wind. And on its circuits, the wind returns. Many people say the wind is free. No. It says, has a job. He goes to the north, to south, and he backs to the same place. The wind, yes, the wind. You're thinking, I am free like the wind. They say the, song, the songs, the singers. Even the youth say, I'm free like the wind. Solomon said, I'm sorry. It's, like a, it's just a routine. It's just a routine. Solomon simply observed the cycles of nature on his search of meaning and conclude that every nature was repetitive. Every nature is repetitive. The question is, where are we going now? It's, it's happening in the churches. What's, what we have to do on Sunday? Go to the church. What we are going to do in church? Sing some songs. Listen a sermon. After that, go to the restaurant. After that, I don't know, take a nap, some coffee. And after, what's going to happen tomorrow? Next day, next week. Nothing ever changes in some lives. There is no progress, but just activity. It's the problem. There is no progress, but many activities. Many activities. Another illustration. The routine of the rivers. It says, all streams run to the sea, but the sea is not full. To the places where the streams flow, there they flow again. It's another example. The rivers. They came and they go, repeating themselves over and over and over and over. There is a mechanical monotony to the way the world turns. Routines. Go to Manhattan. The people just was running. Where are they going? Nowhere. Many activities. Many stores to visit. Searching the meaning of their lives. Searching the meaning of their lives. The frustration of life, verse 8, it says, All things are full of weirdness. A man cannot utter it. The, the eyes is not satisfied with sin, nor the, nor the ear filled with the hearing. Just think about that. People spend hours and hours and hours and hours watching Netflix. Listening and listening and listening music. Wow. You travel and see many, many things. And your eyes, they need more. Your, your ears, they need more. What's happening with Solomon's hearts? He sees everything. He hears everything. And he's saying, it's impossible to satisfy my flesh. Because the flesh is always asking and asking and asking more and more and more. Just think about that. The sexual addiction. The people thinking, when I marry, this problem is going to fix. It's not, it, it doesn't happen. Having a woman. Because it's in your heart, in your flesh. David had seven wives. And one day what he was doing, he was sleeping. He wake up and see the neighborhood. She was taking a bath and he asked her to have sex with her. And they was thinking, David, you have seven wives. Why are you seeking another one? Because you are going to need more and more and more. 
If God is not there, you are going to continue seeking and seeking the same, my friends. Just be careful. Nothing is fulfilling. Nothing. Nothing. We could easily translate verse 8 as life is boring. Life is boring. There is a problem because you are seeing, trying to see. For that reason, many people is waiting the next movie, <laughs> the next book, the next travel, the next visit. Verse 9 to 10 is another thing. Nothing is new. You are thinking, Freddy, are you crazy? Nothing is new. In, in the 60s, 70s, we didn't have smartphones. Nothing is new. What Solomon means is that nothing new is being created by God. Inventions, but not creations, is very different. And he's saying, what has been is what will be. And what has been done is what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. Is there a thing of which it is said, see, this is new? It has been already in the age before us. Solomon is thinking, nothing is new. Nothing is new. Anything we invent is just recycling of something God already created. Because all the components of the iPhone is where? It's in the earth. The plastic, the chips, and everything. They use from some places. It's from earth. Sometimes they just change the colors. <laughs> the components are the same. The systems are the same. Thomas Edison once said that his inventions were only applying the secret of nature for the happiness of mankind. He created nothing new, for there is nothing new under the sun. It's different. Activity, inventions, Different the creations. Is another thing. It's very sad. Verse 11. I'm going to test you today about your history in the States. There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of later things yet to be among those who come after. There is not remembrance. You are thinking, who is going to remember me in 10 years? In 20 years, in 50 years, who is going to remember you? Question. Do you remember your grand, grand, grandfather's name? Do you remember? What's the name of the president of the United States, but the 10th president? Do you remember who is? The number 10. Wow, he was the president of the United States, please. He was the most powerful man in the, in the world. And you don't remember him? Wow, is Solomon saying? Is Solomon saying? Do you remember the 20 president of the United States? The 10 president of the United States is John Tyler. <laughs> Just think about that. Because many people are saying, I am going to be famous because people is going to remember me. Sometimes they remember when you are walking to the street and you see a name, Freddy Morocho. Who was him? <laughs> Statues, you know. Why people is trying to be remembered? They don't want to die because we were created for eternity. And Solomon is saying, who's going to remember you? Solomon's message in this book is going to face us with the reality of our lives, my friends. Just God can do new things, not Solomon, not his preaching. Because you are thinking, what's going to happen with me now? So my life is vanity to vanity. I am nothing. Oh, thank you, Pastor. I am nothing. I am going to home. It's nothing. Why I have to do the things? Read with me. 
Matthew chapter 12, verse 42. The queen of the south will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it for the same. For she, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, something greater than Solomon is here. Jesus is greater than Solomon. Only Jesus can change the world lives of this world, my friends. The empty lives. Only Jesus. Jesus has the last word because he is the greater than Solomon. Jesus is the answer for the meaning of life. Jesus. For that reason, the Christians are happy. They are joyful. They are doing great things because the meaning of their lives is Jesus. Revelation chapter 21, verse 5, it says, And he who was seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. It's different. The man is just inventing things, but Jesus can do all things new. The question is, are you tired with your life now? You are trying to seek a new experience? Jesus is more than an experience. He is life. He is life. Also, he said, Writing this down for these words are trustworthy and true. Jesus can do new things in your life, in your society, in our family, in everything, in our business. Because Jesus has the power to do it. Because he's God. And he can create. God wants to do something new with you? Yes. Why? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. In Christ. Out of Christ, we are in the same silly life that we are living. Empty. Trying to find something to make us happy. But in Jesus, we are new creations. So, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. The question is, how many people believe in the scriptures? Solomon is saying, you are not going to find purpose for your life here in the world. Just in Jesus. Because he's not from here. He's not from here. He said, your job is nothing. But in Jesus, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, it says, Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Wow. Solomon didn't have this verse, my friends. Wow, he were very happy reading these verses. Our labor, our, our work, knowing that in the Lord, not in our desires, not in our experience, in the Lord, your labor is not in vain. If you are working in the hospital, working in the school, working wherever you are working, if you are doing for the Lord, it's not in vain. Something you are going to live for the next generations. The problem is the Christians, we are so focused in ourselves that we are not doing anything for the next generation. For that reason, we are losing them because they don't have our faith. Because we are not living for our faith. To finish, my friends, conclusion. God is the center of life and to ignore him makes life vain and empty. Are you ignoring the Lord? Are you are he just, he's just for you a religion to come and listen to a sermon on Sunday? Or is your life? Life is a matter of deceptive illusion when it is lived apart from God. 
as Solomon was saying, without God, the life is empty. God made us for eternity. Live for eternity. Not just for the temporal things. And only his eternal presence in our lives can satisfy our thirst for meaning. Because we are always seeking a meaning for our lives. Let's pray, my friends. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for showing us that the meaning of our life is in you. In you, Jesus, just in you. We don't want to put our eyes in the worldly things, but we want to focus on you and work in this world for your kingdom. Thank you for your love, your Holy Spirit, your word. Thank you for church. Bless our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.